Hello, welcome to Rappler Talk. Joining us is or Orly or Orlando Mercado, former Defense Secretary, former Senator who chaired the Defense Committee during his time, and now an academic and a lecturer at the Development Academy of the Philippines, and he is currently based in the UP College of Public Administration. We're going to talk to former Defense Secretary Orly Mercado on the changing security threats to the country and how things have evolved since his time in the Defense uh, Department. Welcome to Rappler Talk, uh, Senator Secretary Orly. Orly, everybody Orly. calls me Orly. Okay. My friends call me Orly, my enemies call me names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good start. So, uh, as, as I informed you, um, has the con ha does the country need to rethink its security threats? Because during your time, when you were Defense Secretary, mm. Hindi ba yung primary threat was the communist insurgency? That was 1990s, right? Uh, I was secretary in 1998 at yes. the start of the Arab administration. Correct. And then uh, up to uh, the time when Ed Sados happened in 2001. I yes. uh, stayed for a while, but I had to resign with differences uh, because of certain, uh, you know, differences with certain people who were being appointed, people I had ordered investigated uh, in the mm -hmm. military. Yeah. And uh, um, after that, I've, uh, I've retired. I'm a recovered politician. <laughs> I've recovered <laughs> you, already from politics. So you have no strain of that virus wala, in you. Wala na. I'm already <laughs> immune as far as I'm concerned. I am enjoying my life uh, in the academy. But I'm teaching a lot. And I, yeah. I still do radio, I still do and, my old television program. And you keep in touch with security issues yeah. you've, you've uh, been following. So I was wondering, since you were Defense Secretary, it's as if the security environment hasn't changed because still today our defense officials say communist insurgency is still the number one threat. Do you agree or should we rethink I, this? Actually, uh, uh, the threat assessment is going to be always dynamic. Mm. And uh, the task of uh, policymakers in the security uh, realm is to be ahead of the curve, to be able to uh, get away from uh, groupthink mm -hmm. or uh, the mechanism by which uh, we just identify uh, so-called threat, threat groups, yeah, etc. because yeah. it's so dynamic. Mm -hmm. Even the concept of security has changed. Yes. Uh, uh, you have all types of security uh, problems, uh, from human to economic, right. to disaster, to uh, mm. climate change, uh, b very mm. basic issues that can easily trigger risks uh, and make them uh, real disasters and threats. So in that particular scenario, mm. you cannot say, oh, this is just the I listing see. of, we list the so-called threat mm. groups, and this is a, these are the threats to our national security. Uh, in fact, they are there, but even all of those uh, threats, even w there are no simple solutions because they are, the problems are very complex. Mm. It is wrong to search for simple solutions to a very mm. complex problem. Now, it's not only complex, it is, uh, aside from that, not only complex, you have, a, a, you have volatility uh, in mm -hmm. the mix. And with that volatility, your uh, people are uh, ambiguous. They, they, they don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And even those who are trying to create policy have to really zoom out and see all of these things from a larger strategic perspective to be able to chart the destiny. Yeah, I'm asking this because of what happened in Basilan recently. Yes, yes. Apparently, it's the first suicide bombing in the country. So isn't terrorism... A greater threat, but you said we cannot just rank these threats. Now, my, my, my thinking is, I, I know that, uh, I know, I understand the military. Yes. Uh, I, I do a radio show, and I interviewed uh, uh, the spokesperson, and the spokesman was saying, well, we're trying to get the message out that uh, we should not uh, label this as a, uh, mm. uh, a suicide bombing, a car bomb, or a, 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 a new mechanism of uh, terror. Now, my, 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 I, I can understand it, but I would like to express the apprehension about being so uh, hep up about uh, uh, groupthink, about this thing 
is new, and therefore, if it's the position that's taken by the media, suddenly uh, it changes the nature of the, uh, of the response. Uh, whether it is Abu Sayyaf or uh, we should be prepared. We should be prepared for the changes in the threats that uh, mm -hmm. are morphing. They're morphing so fast mm -hmm. that there is a real need to bring down to the level, to the operations level, uh, a lot more effort to be able to establish good intelligence gathering, mm -hmm. and uh, so that will uh, allow us to respond early on and face this crisis. Marawi taught us a very serious mm -hmm. lesson, and that is these organizations are continually, the threat groups are continually operating and trying to build their capacity. Mm -hmm. When we, are, we were unable to get them at the very beginning, to a certain extent it is attributed to luck. But things are not going to be lucky all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We cannot be dependent on luck. In fact, we must focus attentions on what we call near misses, mm -hmm. as much as lessons learned from our previous experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we miss, if we, if we got away with it, and it is a stroke of luck, it's only a matter of time this thing will happen again. Will happen again and it will take a new form which we were unable to see at the very beginning. So the demands really seriously mm -hmm. is get better information. Now, the, the Americans taught us a very good lesson here. It is a big military organization. It has a lot of funds, a lot of mm -hmm. war material. But unfortunately, September 11 mm. indicated that for all the competencies of these mm -hmm. uh, intelligence gathering organizations, they do not talk to each other. Or there is no mechanism because uh, you can understand it if you're uh, if you're familiar with the uh, like you are familiar with the military organization, mm -hmm. you know that information is gold, uh, mm -hmm. especially at the level wherein you're assessing these so-called threats. So uh, they keep it uh, from each other, and uh, there is a necessity for them to be able. You know, you also understand the realities of of careers. Uh, careers mm -hmm. can be made or destroyed by mishandling uh, or sharing or not sharing. Yes. Uh, and it's also about taking credit yes. for successes. Yeah, and, and, that's, that's, and that's all over. Okay. Uh, you cannot, it's not Filipino. It's, it's, it's part it's of universal. the organization. It's universal. Okay. So you'll have to be able to, com to continually uh, flatten the organization, allow interchanges mm -hmm. and uh, uh, moving in and out of this information so that you'll have a better picture. Otherwise, you get into that group think, you begin to brief people and say, okay, these are the threat group, yes, one, yes. two, three, four, and, and you see this um, uh, threat, like you, what you have noticed, the, the, the communist insurgency is still high on the list. Mm -hmm. To my mind, it is a serious threat, and it is a, it is a real problem on our part for us not to be able to solve this in 50 years. But when you come to think of it, it is, also be, it is also indicative of the fact that we have not gotten to solving the roots of the problem in 50 years. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why there will always be groups and there will always be marginalized sectors of society who will mm -hmm. say, okay, uh, I cannot get justice from the criminal justice system of this mm -hmm. country, uh, regardless of who is president, what government it is, so I will come with you and you can get me justice. Or if there is, uh, there is an absence of basic services, health, education, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and somebody else is willing to fill it up, then the Lumads will say, yes, uh, let us, uh, we, we will protect you and you have a sanctuary uh, in our barangays. So, sa inyong palagay, bakit nakaka-alarm ba, nakaka-panic ba to call what happened in Basilan suicide bombing na we have to do we, we now, need to be hmm. careful about this now there it, 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 it's, uh, there are those who are too scared about you know changing you know, this nomenclatures and they might mm. um, fear, you know because in this world today um, it's easy to uh, to start this <laughs> in the words of Mao if, if a prayer is started can be started by a spark yeah. okay but you have to balance these things you cannot also tamp down realities. Mm -hmm. If, for example, there is a, you know, uh, there is a, uh, a car um, a bomb, 
uh, that was placed, and there were in, there was involvement. You know. In the end, it will come out also. Uh, you cannot uh, cover it up in this world where everybody has a camera and everybody has access to uh, the telephones and other means of information gathering. It's it's very difficult. I think it is important that you tell and be frank about mm -hmm. what what you have. If you want, but the effort to control it and say, don't use oh. these terms because these terms are uh, are. If you use these terms, if they become viral, uh, it will be the terrorists that will benefit. To a certain extent, that's correct, huh? because the terrorists want to terrorize. Eh? Mm -hmm. And if they are ter <coughs> they're, they're, they're saying, oh, there's a new way. We're attacking. There's a new mm -hmm. way of. Uh, uh, spreading fear. They'd just be too happy and if the media rides on into it, uh, that's, they have already achieved with only one person blowing himself up uh, in a car. Mm -hmm. uh, you change the scenario or the does response. It, if, we, if the media or others report it as a suicide bombing or apparent suicide bombing, does it show also the weakness? Will it show the weakness of the military? They were unable to... Not, but in, in, not but really because you cannot... It's so difficult really to determine uh, when they will attack. They have the choice of target. Correct. They yeah. have, yeah. They, they can just easily identify the weaknesses. Yes. And then uh, all they need to do is really uh, go, slip through the, through the uh, net. And, and there is actually very, it's a very difficult thing to stop a, a terrorist who is acting alone without mm -hmm. so many uh, so many contacts and who keeps uh, under the radar. It's so difficult to determine when it's going to attack. And they're changing their means. Look at what they're doing in Europe. There is no bomb. Somebody yeah. will just get a truck and then <laughs> run it through the, all the tourists in London or in Paris. You know, these, are, these are the new things they're doing. And it's now uh, creating a lot of fear. So the government response is to say, okay, this is new, but we are going to respond to it. Te you, you tourists, don't be afraid. We will have mechanisms by which... Uh, but the real hope is to be able to be ahead okay, of the curve. Yeah. But that's not very yeah. easy. So that's, that means uh, very effective and good intelligence gathering. Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, I think what should happen in the military is a serious assessment of the way it's still organized. Mm. I've always been uh, talking about this even when I was secretary, that I don't think the, real, the, or the, uh, the armed forces of the Philippines are organized to, to, press, to, to uh, cope with present threats. Why? Largely because of the fact that uh, it's still very traditional. We still mm -hmm. have a larger uh, army. Okay. Uh, and mm -hmm. even our Navy is only, only now are we focusing a lot of uh, attention yes. and providing it uh, equipment and material to be able to have uh, uh, awareness of its domain and situation mm -hmm. in the domain, uh, situational awareness as well. But in reality, uh, we, to a certain extent, we're still fighting, uh, we're preparing to fight the last war. Eh? That is part and parcel of, this is a you know, common problem of mm -hmm. military organizations, eh? and you cannot blame them also. Uh, so I would like to believe that there is time for us to seriously look the military organization and find out how we are constituted and make it match the new assessment or the mm. developing assessment of the threats. You were for saying example, earlier you, we need a flat, a more flat organization? A flatter organization for, for quickly. Agility. For quick, agility. And, mm. uh, you know, this is, this is now uh, one of the things that have to be done uh, under the present circumstances because when you come to think of it, you, you have to be able to move quickly in areas where mm -hmm. uh, the, the problems are. Now, we are not only fighting wars. Uh, we have, we, you know, there's very little possibility of somebody. The, the invasions of uh, states, mother states, the time, you know, since, uh, since the uh, Treaty of Westphalia, 1648, <laughs> where they established the nation state, mm -hmm. uh, system, the world has actually changed. So actually, uh, overlaying this is information technology. And the threats now that we face are rooted on information technology. Look at the United States now. Their, their problem is 
their own elections have been ha yes. hacked. No? Influenced by Influenced Russia. Influenced by Russia, yeah. etc. And uh, in, in the next war, it will be fought, I think, uh, with a lot more uh, uh, use of technology. And you can be stymied even without fi firing a shot. In other words, uh, but, but we don't have, uh, we are woefully, uh, I think, uh, lacking in this particular mm -hmm. capability. In other words, our organization has not kept in lockstep with mm -hmm. the threats that are developing. Now, I know it's difficult. Actually, you just talk about reorganizing, you know, you, know, you try to examine the organization. You will affect careers, positions, uh, and designations. These are critical. But it can, it ha it can be done with some uh, levels of understanding of how it can evolve as uh, painlessly, as, or, or the, with the least pain for those who have developed their careers, because uh, that, is, that can be a real source of uh, discontent. So the armed forces has to beef up or be more uh, uh, ready in terms of cyber security? That's what uh, is that, area is. is? Does the armed forces, does the military have a unit that thinks about this or well, there equips are, its there people? Are, uh, there are assigned organizations within the, within the military establishment to, to, that does this. But the response, I think, uh, is still um, so far off from the commercial developments already uh, that uh, we really have to have new recruits. We should maybe change and study very hard uh, our uh, threats and how we are going to, mm. to cope with these threats and look at, and as a consequence you can conclude what our personal personal uh, requirements would be and I presume that there would be a lot we would yeah. need a lot of younger uh, people uh, I, I remember the, the, the example I used to give is this uh, there was a time when you to become a soldier you have to be five feet four inches no and really? Is that yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Even in the PMA, you, you'll okay. be worried. Yeah, it's a height uh, requirement. There's a height requirement. And uh, to waive that, uh, the Secretary of Defense has to sign a you know, waiver to approve it, you know, because it's a requirement. I used to <laughs> say, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, uh, I, I, I don't believe uh, height is, it should prevent somebody who mm. wants to serve. Because, you know, I would tell them, did you know that when I uh, went to Vietnam for the first time and met the military officials, I found out that their generals were relatively... Short. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a tall man myself, <laughs> but, you know, I felt... Uh, but I used to tell, I used to nudge my friends and my, 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 the officers with me and tell them, you know, these are the guys... These uh, diminutive soldiers are the guys that beat the Chinese, beat the French, and beat the Americans. Yeah, yeah. And so don't belittle them. <laughs> These guys were the ones who pulled up uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, cannons up the uh, BMBM pool. So I don't, I'm not aware if height is still a requirement today. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. <laughs> it is. But, you know, that's, it takes time for, for uh, yeah. the military organization to uh, accept these particular changes. But most uh, military uh, establishments are changing already. Even China mm -hmm. has already uh, has reorganized and uh, has reformed it. And, quite, and, uh, and they cut their standing army quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means that while we still have these threats, these old threats, it's not a question of number. When you have to think of it, you, you mentioned the communist threat. Mm -hmm. You know, they, uh, at their height in the 80s, they were about, uh, what, they were saying it was about 25,000. But uh, now they... Thousand. It just dwindled them to yes, less than 5,000, yes. maybe 4,000, they say, etc. But whatever it is, it is still persistent because we have not addressed uh, the, the yeah. causes. Okay, now we're there. We've got to be able to get to solve this particular mm -hmm. problem. Now, I know it's not easy when you come to think of it. I've been following what has happened to Colombia because the FARC for a while mm -hmm. uh, is, is also uh, the, one of the longest uh, running insurgencies. Mm -hmm. But they signed a, uh, an agreement. An agreement. Yeah. Although they elected a new president now, Duque, uh, because he was critical of this you know, and said he was going to fix this, uh, this mm -hmm. um, agreement. 
there are still very deep wounds. And I would suppose the same is true with our uh, uh, dealings with the CPP and PA. Mm -hmm. And it would be necessary for us to develop mechanisms by which we can solve these problems. Uh, because even if you sign an agreement, if it is not implementable, or mm -hmm. if there are serious problems, it is so easy uh, to, to, to subvert uh, the movement or the, the effort to succeed. So the, 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 the bulk of the work is actually uh, going to be in its implementation. Unfortunately for us, fortunately for us, I think, we don't have the problem of Colombia that has aggravated it. That's the drug problem, the cocaine problem. But uh, apparently we do have. Okay, we have it no, in, but it's in, not a different, correct. in a different yes. sense because yeah. it's not cocaine that's a serious problem yeah, here. It's, it's uh, shabu, shabu is methamphetamine. Yeah. Yeah. So in, uh, in that uh, particular uh, area, uh, I think uh, we, we are, we're luckier. But we must be able to address this particular problem mm -hmm. as soon as possible. How about external threat? You said we, it's, threats are dynamic, the security yeah. situation is dynamic, but now we're seeing uh, uh, more pronounced uh, aggressive, aggressiveness of China in the West Philippine Sea. So again, should the government, you know, um, how would it divide its resources and look yeah, at the external most, threat? Uh, most scholars I have uh, studied have indicated that uh, the time of, you know, uh, invasions, uh, land invasions are over, mm -hmm. actually. Well, of course, we, we, you, can, you can mention Russia and Crimea, mm -hmm. uh, but that's an old uh, problem. But the, the point now is, especially for us, uh, in a, uh, an archipelago, the issue there really is uh, our maritime security. Mm -hmm. And we know right. it, and we know it from your book, uh, reading through it, uh, that it is a snapshot of a very critical period of this mm -hmm. particular conflict. But if you zoom out further, this is going to be very long term. Uh, I don't think uh, the Chinese, nor should we, uh, give up our uh, core interests. Uh, we have core interests to protect, they have core interests to protect. So it's going to be basically maritime conflict, naval uh, engagement, and you know, they have introduced many things there. The use of, uh, of uh, Coast Guard, as yes, you had mentioned yes, in your book. Yeah. Also, the militia. Yes. The militia, the Chinese, the have Chinese a, fishermen yes. are not actually fishermen. You know? Well, they're fishermen, but they have been part of the militia. They're there. like Kafgu in the sea. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, but the, shouldn't we have something uh, like that? <laughs> during our time, the moment we, we, when we captured them uh, fishing in our waters, uh, the thing that you will notice is they're practically the same age, and they, you don't you don't have too young or too old uh, mm -hmm. fishermen. I say we wish to kid each other and say, my God, this is the only uh, group of fishermen I know that they have an age group that, <laughs> <laughs> that goes out into the sea. But we yeah. knew uh, during that there are many things that they are doing, uh, and this is part of and parcel of a, a strategic plan. Yeah. Now, unfortunately for uh, for us, uh, we don't have a culture of strategic thinking, and then yeah. we are aggravated by our system of uh, choosing our leaders. Uh, you have every six years, these things change, and we don't grade our leaders uh, on the basis of continuity of uh, efforts mm -hmm. that, of projects or programs that work. In fact, I was uh, suggesting in my in a talk I gave recently, uh, I was actually moderator of, of an assessment program for um, the current, uh, the previous president. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, you know what you lack? You lack a criterion, uh, criterion on the continuity, because mm -hmm. continuity is one of the biggest problems of governance in our country. Mm -hmm. So uh, from the local uh, level up to the national level, we just uh, don't, we don't even read, we don't even mm -hmm. study what has been done because there is no, no, no record also documentation mm -hmm. of uh, uh, strategy or what other programs. 
we don't document, and as a consequence, we, we don't develop a culture of strategic thinking because there is no way by which these building blocks can be put uh, one on top of the other and for us to be able to see what it contributes to national interest. And also, to re I just realized, well, I realized recently that the Philippines is one of the top 10 countries with the longest coastline. So when you mentioned yes. maritime security, mm. it means board, uh, patrolling our borders, uh, but Coast Guard is still beefing up its uh, number of ships, yeah. it, it, vessels. Yeah, that's, that's what we should have, actually. Yeah. Uh, now, as a consequence of uh, this, uh, uh, made clear uh, things that have been made clear in that particular decision. Our uh, mar maritime resources are even hu larger than our land yes, resources, yes. terrestrial resources. And so here we are. We're missing out on. You know. Now, if you are in competition, uh, we are not at loggerheads, but it's a natural competition between for 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 our own resources in. Uh, uh, maritime resources. Mm -hmm. I think it is incumbent upon us to really look at our armed forces, the way we're organized, mm -hmm. and make radical changes. Now, I know it's not easy, but it has to be done. And also, I think this was mentioned by a number of Navy officers mm -hmm. I interviewed. They said there's never been a Navy chief of staff mm -hmm. except for General Biazon, but only for, for two mm -hmm. months. So the mind Marine, so <laughs> <laughs> but the mindset is really <laughs> army, it's land, you know. Uh, we always say uh, <laughs> that, you know, the, the, well, the concept of modernization, and this came up in the debates a long, long time ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, when we passed the first, uh, I sponsored the first modernization Modernity. that was never funded, and mm -hmm. um, that just lapsed uh, without uh, being implemented. But we were always, uh, we were one in saying, that the easiest thing to do is to buy equipment, to acquire equipment, mm -hmm. but uh, to change the mindset, mm -hmm. to modernize the thinking, that's still a difficulty. Up to now, that's still a difficulty. Yes. Well, um, if you were Defense Secretary still, I mean, at this point in time, mm -hmm. how would you first change mindsets, and second, how will you make it painless to, to shift Actually, the there, are, there are things that have been done already, okay. quite a lot. Uh, as uh, if we go back and look back, we find out that uh, we started, we planted those seeds uh, in the uh, Joint Defense uh, Review. Uh, mm, yes, in, uh, during your during, time. During yeah, our time. Which you turned over. The, yes, and then what that became uh, the uh, Philippine Defense Reform, PDR. Yes. They had a, uh, they had a uh, roadmap of how to mm -hmm. change the organization. Yes. Uh, that's quite quite impressive work, but uh, I still have some you know reservations. But uh, there's a lot there's a lot of brain power in the military. Uh, I think uh, what has to be done is for them to be challenged, and you know make them. Uh, I used to hate I hate using a cliche, but to really get out of the confines of uh, mm -hmm. traditional thinking, and uh, as a consequence of that, you really uh, come up with. Uh, unique ways by which we are able to cope. Because if we're only concentrating on acquisition, uh, mm -hmm. basis development, acquisition of war material, acquisition of bottoms and uh, airplanes, and that's fine, but that's only part of it. And mm -hmm. I think uh, countries like ours, that is poor, that's relatively poor. Now we're not that poor anymore, <laughs> but we're moderately poor, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, it is incumbent on persons to be able to uh, develop that muscle uh, without necessarily straining uh, the budget that is uh, intended for uh, uh, the, for services, public services. Because to do so will really, to in effect, also weaken our uh, our case about protecting our people. Even the quest question of terrorism, the sources of terrorism. Uh, and the recruitment are always the unemployed, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, those who are not educated, or those who have not been able to give yeah, be given a chance. Those who have grievances. Yes, or those who have nowhere else to, to turn to. Or also political, uh, well, at, in Marawi, there's also political yeah. rivalries. And, and, and that's not very easy to, to tease up. Yes. Uh, uh, clans, uh, mm -hmm. families, yes. tribes, mm -hmm. etc. 
I, we can see when we when we zoom out and look at uh, what happened in the in the Middle East and in Northern Africa. My God, you know, you have situations here wherein uh, all of these countries that were that are having trouble with each other. When you come to think of it, it's during the colonial times that they were given <laughs> political divisions and called uh, mm -hmm. states. When actually uh, we have the, the, what was uh, uh, peppered over was the fact that. Uh, there were differences in culture, in ethnicity, in language, etc. that were deep. And it's like what happened to the Balkan states also. So we have to be very conscious of that and try to find out how, you know, this security is so different now. It's not a question of how many guns you have and how many mm -hmm. soldiers you have. It is how you are able to understand the problem and to be able to Reduce the risk, manage the political and um, mm -hmm. even even the disaster risks. So that will have an impact on the security of the state. When we say protector of the people, it should not be always at the end me, me having a weapon mm -hmm. so that we can shoot it out with whoever is going to come in here. They may not need to come in here. Mm -hmm. Countries can take over mm -hmm. and influence you without firing a shot. So that is, where, that is where we should put our resources. I'm not saying this is either or. The problem mm -hmm. sometimes is that we're given false dichotomies yeah. and told, okay, it's a choice, but how many, if you're going to have uh, computers, you know, when somebody enters a house, the, uh, will, you be able, will co your computer <laughs> be able to save you uh, when somebody has a gun? That kind of an argument yeah. to me. Uh, can happen, but it is it is precious. It's not it is it, it is not of value because mm -hmm. I'm talking about being able to, in the words of Sun Tzu, being able to win without firing a mm -hmm. shot, which is which is the more important uh, element there. Thank you very much, uh, former Defense Secretary oh, Senator Orly. 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 Thank you for your insights, and uh, I'd like to uh, just. I can't sum this up, but at least two points uh, in our conversation with Orly Mercado. Apart from rethinking and getting out of the confines of the military box or security box, it's also restructuring the organization. So these are things that we can think about uh, for policymakers as well as for those interested in security issues. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you'll join us in future sessions of Rappler Talk.